Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you this morning. I hope you have your hip waders ready for a little bit of rain. I guess we're expecting for the next two or three days. Uh, hopefully it won't be nearly as bad as they uh, are saying it might be. But hopefully be prepared is always uh, the best motto. We want to welcome you as we gather to worship this morning. A special welcome to those who are watching through Facebook and through YouTube. We want to welcome you to our service here at Central Parish. And trust the hand of God will be upon you just as God's hand is with each one of us as we come together to lift up our voices in praise to him. Uh, again, uh, quite a few announcements. I'm going to go through them as quickly as I possibly can. Men's and women's group meeting this week. Women's group here at Clyde River Church on Tuesday at 10. Men's group at Canoe Cove at 10.30 on Thursday. There is no youth group for either group this week or the next week. We're looking to do our joint Christmas party on December the 10th. Uh, we're hoping to be able to head up to uh, Burnside Community Care uh, to do some visits and to drop off some uh, Christmas goodies for the residents there. And then we'll be having our Christmas party uh, down here for both youth groups. They combined for that day. So that's on December 10th tentatively. will be more information to come on that. Bible study concludes uh, our fall st session this week, uh, this evening, 7 o'clock at Clyde River. Thursday at 1 o'clock at Canoe Cove, and we're looking at the priority of prayer, and that's uh, this evening's topic. Um, also, please remember, a uh, big thank you, actually, to everyone for helping out with the Christmas uh, shoe boxes this year. We had uh, over 50 shoe boxes this year come in for the church, so a big thank you to everyone for helping out with that one. And also a big thank you to everyone who helped out with the Canoe Cove uh, Church Food Drive last Sunday afternoon. The food was dropped off uh, Monday afternoon and it was uh, well received and a big thank you to everyone who participated in that. We will be doing an elder selection for the congregation here in Clyde River. We'll be looking uh, for three elders uh, this time. We are on term service for elders. The ballots for the elder selection will be going to members of the congregation and they will be distributed on December the 5th and we're asking that those ballots be returned on the 19th. You'll be receiving your ballot and you're asked to mark either one, two, or three X's on the ballot beside the name you believe God is calling to serve as an elder uh, for this congregation. You're asked to then insert it into the envelope you're given, write your name on the front of the envelope, and then hand it back in uh, either to an elder, to myself, or you can put it in the offering plate. We will have the plates available at the door for them. Please don't write your name on the ballot. We don't want to know your name or see it on the ballot anywhere, please put it on the outside of the envelope just so that we can collect all the ballots back from everyone. Uh, so be in prayer for that as we uh, select three uh, elders for our congregation. Also, online auction is going very well. Uh, please follow along on Facebook if you aren't already. Um, and if you think you're being successful, you might want to check through the items you're bidding on because you might be in for a surprise. Maybe somebody slipped a little bid in there uh, ahead of you. So just be careful on that one. You could be doing what I'm doing, waiting, waiting, <laughs> waiting until near the close uh, of the week. Uh, however, don't be like me because I'm liable to forget to bid and then I'll be in trouble. Uh, the auction closes Friday at 5 p.m. So the bidding will be ended at 5 p.m. on Friday uh, and then uh, winners will be announced and collected. I'll be sending, uh, we'll be sending uh, messages on Facebook to those who are successful bidders uh, for that. If you have uh, entered an item for the auction, and if you know that item isn't going to be here on a collection day, uh, which will be next Sunday afternoon, if it's not going to be here, can you please contact Sherry about that? We do need to have your information so that the person who's a successful bidder can contact you or get a hold of you to make arrangements as to when, uh, I'm guessing it'll be mostly baked goods, will be dropped off. Uh, that's a great way to plan your Christmas baking. Have somebody else do it, and then you just get to enjoy it. So, uh, so please remember the online auction. Keep a, keep an eye on it this week uh, throughout uh, the week, and it closes on Friday at five. Um, 
I think, oh, Sunday school. Next week, Sunday school will be over at the community center. Just want to make that announcement. Sunday school in the community center next week uh, because we're having a whole bunch of auction items downstairs uh, in, uh, on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So please remember, Sunday school next Sunday at the community center. Worship here as usual. Um, those are our announcements. We do want to extend birthday greetings. Uh, Wayne McKinnon had a birthday on Friday, I believe. And Donna McDonald had a birthday, I think it's today. And I was told it ends in a zero. They didn't tell me any more than that. So I'll just leave it alone at that. So we want to extend birthday greetings to both of you as you celebrate uh, your birthdays this week. Let's join together as we share our call to worship. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord is coming to judge the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and truth. So let us worship God with praise and honor. We will offer our thanks and praise for all that God has done. Let's join together. Let us pray. Lord of light and love, Lord of all light, we come before you this morning with a sense of wonder and awe eager to praise your name and to enjoy your presence, to gather here with one another, to be in the fellowship of fellow believers. We gather here knowing that you are the source of all that is good and true, that you surround us with your love, which is eternal. You bring gifts of peace and healing into troubled lives. You show us the way to love friend and enemy alike, and to build a better world together. In this time of worship, O oh God, may we draw near to you and to ourselves. For we know that you draw close to us, that wherever two or three are gathered together, you are there in the midst of them. And so we know that you are with us this day. Sustain us with your grace and with your love. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join together now as we sing our opening hymn, He is Exalted. him seeking his wisdom seeking his power let us pray wondrous God teach us your ways and give us the grace to follow them give us eyes to see the world as you do give us hearts to love the world as you do and give us the wisdom to discern how best to live as followers of Christ may our lives share the power of the living word. May our lives show the grace, the peace, and the love seen in and through Jesus Christ. May it be seen in us, and may your word continue to teach us 
how to live for you. Sustain us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A response of reading this morning is taken from Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago. You are all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord of the highest nation. Your statutes stand for Holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. Our next reading is taken from John's Gospel, John chapter 18. Pilate then went back inside, to the pa inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did, you, did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Amen, and may the word of God be heard in our midst. May we seek his truth, and may we seek his abundant grace. We're going to join once again in praising God. We're going to sing the hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him. <laughs>
Congregational participation time. <laughs> Name some kings. King Arthur. King Arthur. There we go. Solomon. King Solomon. Very good. King David. King David. Another good one. Herod. King Herod. Another good one. You're going very biblical on me here. This is lovely. George. King George. <laughs> Who else? Henry. King Henry. Think of the Bible. Think of a version of the Bible. James. King James. There you go. <laughs> Who else? Elizabeth. Oh, no, he said King. I said King. <laughs> Could be King Charles down the road. <laughs> Who else? Think of any other kings? Edward. King Edward. Arthur. King Arthur. <laughs> King Kong? King Kong? Yes. <laughs> we had a, it, it's good. I had King Kong now in both congregations. So King Kong is good. You're missing the king of rock and roll. Elvis. 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 And what about basketball? King who? Jordan. Well, no, not Jordan. King, king James. King LeBron James. And what about the hockey king? Who? Well, King Clancy, oh, that's good. That's a Leaf player, though. That's good. But there is Wayne Gretzky who played on the L.A. Kings. So we have lots of kings that we can think about. Kings are probably more common than we realize, and yet the reality is kings, well, they don't excite us a great deal because they're not part of our daily lives. And yet this morning is Christ the King Sunday. This is the last Sunday in the church's year. We begin a new church calendar starting next Sunday with the beginning of Advent. This is the close of our church year. It is Christ the King Sunday, and nobody ever gets terribly excited about it because it's not something that really resonates with us a great deal. The idea of kingship seems like a bygone Something from the bygone days. Something from the past. Something that, well, we don't talk a lot about anymore. This idea of kingship. This idea of Christ as king. We talk about Christ in a lot of terminology, but kingship is often pushed aside. We talk of him as Christ as Lord. We talk of him as Christ as the shepherd. We talk of him as the prince of peace. We talk of him as, and the list goes on and on. And yet the whole idea of kingship sort of disappears because we might be even a little uncomfortable with it. Because we wrestle with the fact that, does that mean we're his servants? That we're his subjects? What does this idea of kingship mean? As I was thinking uh, of this, and as I was working away on the scripture and the message for this week, I kept going back to my childhood. Uh, and I kept going back to a commercial that I could remember. And it was the closest thing I could think of to becoming a king. And I always wanted this to happen to me. So I want to share the commercial with you. Ah, there's the butter. What was that? I'll check. <clears throat> Hi. Say hello to the buttery taste of Imperial Margarine. Imperial tastes so rich and creamy, you just might mistake it for butter. And frankly, we wouldn't mind if you did. the times I ate margarine, I never got a crown on my head. <laughs> Try as I might. But for a lot of us, that's really what kingship is about. It's about wearing the crown. It's about that idea of having people as your subjects. It's about power. It's about prestige. It's about kingdoms. It's about knights, it's about round tables, it's about battles and wars. It's about a throne. And yet this morning we're talking about a king 
who is very different than that. A king and a kingdom that is incredibly different than what we perceive, than what we know, than what we realize. Jesus was called king many times in Scripture. He was called king of the Jews 18 times throughout the New Testament. He was called king of Israel four times. He was called the king who comes in the name of the Lord once. And then on top of that, he was called another eight times king. Over and over and over again in scripture, we see Jesus is referred to as a king. But what's fascinating is that in all the New Testament, Jesus never refers to himself once as king. He never says, I am the king. I am the king of the Jews. The closest he came is in our portion of scripture that we shared this morning. Between the, the dialogue between him and Pilate, who was representing a king. He was representing Caesar. And so here the dialogue and the discussion was taking place. And finally, Pilate says to him, you are a king then. And Jesus says, you are right in saying I am a king. Even there, Jesus doesn't say, he doesn't come out and say, I am a king. But he's saying, you're right in saying. He's acknowledging his kingship. And it's fascinating that it's here, as he prepares to come to the end of his life, that he acknowledges that kingship. Because throughout his ministry, he would not. Throughout his ministry, he did everything he could to downplay the idea of him as a king. And yet he was born to be king. He was born the king. And not simply king of the Jews, but king of humanity. The kingship of Christ is not limited to a certain group, to a certain place, to a certain country. The kingship of Christ is for all people at all times. His kingdom is much larger, much vaster than even the greatest kingdoms that we found on earth. Now in ancient cultures, kings claimed a divine mandate. They were on the throne because God had placed them there. They were adored by the masses, accountable to no one, and met with royal treatment. They had servants to do their very bidding. But even then, kingships were not permanent. They would last for a generation. Perhaps they would last an era. Perhaps they would last a dynasty. But eventually they would fade away. Today, the monarchy has given way to democracy, to communism, to socialism, to a republic style of government. Monarchies are seen as mostly figureheads. Royalty, be they kings or queens or princes or princesses, are seen as figureheads. They concern themselves with national duties, social activities, diplomatic functions. The Queen is head of our government here in Canada, and yet if you ask most Canadians, they wouldn't realize that. <coughs> That's the way it is with royalty and kingdoms. They're not the same as they used to be. And yet, time and again, we hear throughout Scripture the idea of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. That is the kingdom that Christ speaks of. And it's the kingdom that Christ references in his dialogue with Pilate. And you can see them going back and forth in this whole idea of what does it mean to be a king? What does it mean when they call you king? Where is your kingdom? And Jesus is telling Pilate that my kingdom is from another place. He's making the assertion that his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not something that we will see tangibly in our midst, except it is. 
The kingdom of God is not defined by borders or boundaries. The kingdom of God is wherever God's people are, wherever you and I are. That is where the kingdom of God is found. You and I are standard bearers for the kingdom of God. You and I are standard bearers for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so where you go, where I go, where we go, the kingdom of God goes. And the kingdom of God needs to be shared. The kingdom of God needs to be proclaimed. The kingdom of God needs to be honored. We've all grown up in a monarchy. We've all grown up with royalty. And it's fascinating. And I don't know whether you've watched the series. Uh, Lisa and I have been watching it. Uh, Netflix series, The Crown, which is a fascinating look at the royal family, basically from uh, before Queen Elizabeth's reign up until the present day. It's going to be six seasons long. Um, and it sort of gives a almost a behind-the-scenes look at some of the major events that took place within the reign of Queen Elizabeth, some of which are factual, some of which are, let's say, not uh, factual, as the case may be. But it has stirred a great deal of interest in the royal family. It has stirred up that sense of interest that hasn't been there in a long time. It stirred up that sense that these are interesting people. And these are our queens. This will be our future king. Or future kings, as the case may be. And so we wanted to know more about them. This royal family. This royal family that receives over $11 million a year from the British government in order to run their household. This royal family that makes approximately $189 million a year on land holdings that they have throughout Great Britain. This royal family that can still excite people when they come to visit. And I will say, that is my that will be my claim to fame. I had a snack with Prince Charles when they were here. Uh, Lisa and the community choir played for Prince Charles on his visit to PEI, and I got to have a little snack with him. <laughs> nice guy. And that's what I told people. Very friendly fellow. But, even sitting beside him, you knew there was something different. In a lot of ways, we were the same. But in a lot of ways, we weren't. And I have to wonder if that wasn't the same way with Pilate talking with Jesus. As they came face to face, as they talked face to face, as they argued back and forth, as they debated back and forth, the whole notion of kingship, the whole notion of truth, the whole notion of what we are about. I wonder if Pilate realized that he was in the presence of the king of kings. I wonder if he would realized he was in the presence of the one who was, who is, and who will be. One who wasn't named king, but one who was proclaimed king from the beginning of time. Who was, who is, who will be forevermore. There wasn't a moment where Christ wasn't king. And you and I have the honor of calling him our king. You and I have the honor of calling him our king. You see, Jesus wasn't king because Pilate or the crowd declared him so. He wasn't king because the disciples acknowledged him as so. He wasn't king because you and I acknowledge him as so. He's king because that is who he is. Christ is king. Period. Full stop. But that king and that kingdom is incredibly different. 
in style and substance than the kingdoms we have seen on this earth. Christ's kingdom and kingship was unique. And his call to you and I are equally unique. Christ the king chose to ride on a donkey, not on a chariot, as he made his way to Jerusalem. Christ the king was a chosen king, but not the people's choice. He chose the unattractive duties of healing the sick, <clears throat> defending the helpless, ministering to people and mending broken lives. He chose to hang out with sinners. He chose to hang out with those who were less than him. Instead of dining with dignitaries, instead of drinking fine wine, instead of dressing like royalty. In fact, we see that Jesus for out, throughout his ministry ran from the notion of him being a king. After he, had, after he fed the 5,000, we see that he went away up to the mountain and he left because he knew that the people intended to come and make him king, even king by force. Kingship was in his blood, but it wasn't his ambition because he knew his kingdom was different. He knew that his kingdom was different than the kingdoms of the world. He knew that the people wanted him to be king and wear a royal crown, a crown of gold, a crown of jewels. But he knew his kingdom was defined by the crown of thorns that he would wear. It would be defined by the cross that he would go to. It would be defined by the love that he would show. And ultimately, it will be defined by the kingdom we establish in his name. Christ the King Sunday is often seen as something that we struggle with to make sense of or to apply to our lives. For me, scripture always comes down to how can we apply it to our lives today? What does this say for us today? How can we take it from here and apply it in the world around us? And a lot of times we struggle with this idea of Christ the King because it doesn't speak to us until it does. Until we understand that Christ the King has a great meaning for us, but also a great challenge to us. That if we acknowledge Christ as king, if we realize that our king does not wear a crown of jewels, of power, of prestige, but rather a crown of thorns, a crown of humility, a crown that allows him to serve those below him, then you and I are called to live in that very same way. If our king does it, if our king humbles himself, if our king lowers himself, if our king shows that much love, then you and I are called to show that much love as well. You and I are called to love with that same love. We are called to be as compassionate as Christ is. As compassionate as our king is. And it's interesting that as we draw to a close this church year, we close with that passage of scripture where we see Pilate saying, you are a king then. Our year ends with Pilate making that proclamation. But, in a couple of weeks, as our new church year begins, we hear the words of the Magi. Where is he who was born king of the Jews? The kingship of Christ is woven throughout the church year. The kingship of Christ is very relevant to us today because the kingship of Christ is what we are to be about. And in and through the kingship of Christ, we see the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and we see what God has in store for us as part of Christ's kingdom. There was a preacher, 
by the name of S.M. Lockridge. He was an African-American preacher in a congregation in San Diego, Calvary Baptist Church. He was the senior pastor there from 1953 to 1993. And you probably think you have no idea who he is. And yet, I think you probably do. You just don't realize it. You'll probably recognize this clip if I'm going to show in a couple of seconds. Uh, it's actually part of a six and a half minute clip that comes at the tail end of one of Lockridge's sermons. The sermon was an hour long. You won't get an hour long here. But at the end of the message, he talks about Christ the King. But he does it in such a powerful and profound way, I have never, ever, ever heard anyone define the idea of the kingship of Christ like he does at the tail end of this message. And what's truly fascinating is that it will even probably make us Presbyterians shout amen. No, it will. It is something that motivates, and as we draw to a conclusion this message, I want to hear the words of this preacher of God. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age, he rewards the diligent, and he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. Is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him, but yet he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! That's 
the kingship of Christ. That's why we spend time praising the King of Kings. And that is just a glimpse of the King that we serve. Let's come before him. Let's pray again. Loving God, we thank you for the words of your people. We thank you for the words of Reverend Lockridge. Words that remind us of the King of Kings. That give us a glimpse of what he means to each one of us. Help us, O oh God, to take seriously his call. To know that we are part of his kingdom. To know that we are the standard bearers of the grace of God. That we are called to go in, out into the world and share the good news. Live the good news. Love as we have been loved knowing that there will be times where we will struggle, knowing that we have a king who knows that struggle, who knows our burdens, who knows our uncertainties, and walks with us, knowing that we have a king who wears a crown of thorns, who knows the pain of this world, and yet continued to go and suffer, even to the point of the cross. Because his love compelled him. May our love compel us. May we be willing to go forward. May we continue to share the good news of the kingdom. Even in times of uncertainty. Even in times of difficulty. Even in those moments where we struggle greatly. For we know that you are the one who walks with us. You walk with us in times of danger. You walk with us in times of despair. And even as we come before you this day, we do so knowing that we seek your grace, knowing that we seek your strength, knowing that we seek your wisdom, and knowing that you will share it with us. Help us to realize what your kingdom is about it is not about power. It is not about getting the upper hand. It is not about being victorious. It is about being a servant. It is about walking humbly. It is about walking lovingly. It is about putting others before ourselves so that your love might be seen and so the cross might be proclaimed. May our prayer be, may our words be, that Christ is my king. Christ is our king. And Christ is the king of kings. And Lord of lords. Wondrous God, we are mindful of all those things in the midst of our lives that distract us from your kingdom that distract us from the things of your kingdom. And we ask, O oh God, now that you hear the prayers of your people, as we lift up to you our worries, our concerns, as we lift up to you our brothers and sisters in Christ, as we lift up to you situations from across the globe, Lord, may you hear us. May you hear our prayers. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace that sustains. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that grants us your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. We're mindful of the many needs around us. We ask, O oh God, for your hand to be upon the McPhail family as they mourn Joanne's passing. May you strengthen them and comfort them in this time of loss. May your hand continue to be upon Bernie, upon Lonnie, upon Daryl, upon Fern, that you will continue to lift them up, that you will continue to be a source of comfort and strength. 
Gracious God, we are mindful of the people across British Columbia, and we pray, O oh God, for their safety in the midst of all the flooding, all the uncertainty that is happening there. Give to them your peace, which passes all understanding. Be with those who are helping one another. Be with the first responders who are in the midst of it all. Grant to them your guidance, your direction, and may indeed you pour out your peace upon them. And may they realize just as we realize that in all situations, you are the king and you are there for your people. Abide with us now. We ask it in the name of Christ our King, this day and forevermore. Amen. We're going to close our service as we sing together the hymn, He Leadeth Me. to everlasting, that we serve a king who loves with an unending love, that we serve a king who is compassionate, who is gracious, who is merciful, and who calls us to bear witness to those gifts in our lives and how we live and how we walk with him. May we go into the world proclaiming the hope, the joy, the peace, the love, the graciousness of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, both now and forevermore. Amen.